If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Last night at the service of matriculation, we welcomed the new students into this community of formation. And since we last gathered together in Christ Chapel, the seniors have left us. I always miss their voices the first couple of services. And a new senior class has taken their place. We welcome Dr. Stephen Ray, our Crump visiting professor. And we welcome the Reverend Valerie Mayo into a new position as Director of Beloved Community Initiatives. A unique iteration of this community is coming into being. In our common life, face masks are optional. And in our political life, the midterms approach. Now, I've preached on many, many services the first meeting of classes at chapel, and there's almost always something horrific happening. Hurricane Harvey just had happened, or something else has just happened. And when I think about the horrific situation we're in this year, I would name it as fierce political division and widespread fear. Fear. Now, the right and the left are divided about what they fear, but each um, position increases itself by generating more fear. People are aroused and stressed. So it's fear that characterizes the day. Today we're celebrating the Feast of Augustine of Hippo, 354 to 430. Augustine, he is a heavyweight, a heavyweight theologian for the first Monday of the year. The inventor of the self, the introspective consciousness of the West, perhaps the father of Western civilization, the author of the first autobiography, The Confessions, August Augustine is indeed an inexhaustible subject. And you could read him for your whole lifetime and argue with him about his positions and rhetoric on slavery and freedom, male and female, sexuality and the body. I have done that myself. It is temp tempting to categorize Augustine as a bad guy or a good guy, to reject or compliantly accept Augustine. At this first Monday of the year, I would suggest that instead of categorizing Augustine, you learn from him and live with him. My theology professor when I was in seminary, Professor Margaret Miles, was a historical theologian, a feminist, the first theology woman to serve on the theology faculty at Harvard. And she names Augustine as her lifelong companion. She says that Augustine was the first to describe the whole of human life from an infant nursing at his mother's breast to an old man on his deathbed weeping in meditation. She says she has studied Augustine for 50, 50 years, finding in this passionate and thoughtful man a lifelong companion from her youth. On this day, in the face of fear, on the feast of St. Augustine, I want to raise up just a few things. First, simply the awareness of the past and of history and of people and Christian saints who have lived in challenging times and ask themselves how to live faithfully. 
Augustine did this through his whole lifetime over the long haul. We are asked to do this in our lifetimes over the long haul. And Christians have done this in all the centuries that extend from Augustine to ourselves. They have lived faithfully, imperfectly, sinfully, hopefully, and have made mistakes, and yet they are our saints and our examples. Second, in Augustine, of course, the role of passion, desire, and love in theology and learning and in relationship with God. Passion, love. This was the subject of Scott's matriculation sermon this year, last year, the year before. Always, he says, you learn what you love. And this is from Augustine also. So let passion, desire, and love motivate you and fuel your study and know that reason and intellect, as important as they are in the human person, live and grow alongside desire, passion, and love. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Not an opposition between Torah and love, but love and commandments combined. And finally, steadiness and faithfulness. I know that Augustine somewhere preached on that perfect love casts out fear. I can't give you the footnote, but I know he did. Perfect love casts out fear, and fear paralyzes. Fear in our political situation can paralyze and depress and de-disempower us. But what can empower us is perfect love and faith. Because we are asked to be faithful, not successful. In the culture wars, in the midterms, wherever we are, faithful but not successful. It's nice to be both. <laughs> but we're not necessarily going to have both. So let us embrace faithfulness. Let us embrace perfect love that casts out fear. And let's, in our world of this community, learn to practice a Christianity that is not an instrument of anger and fear, because there are those Christianities out there stirring up the fear, fanning the flames of fear, putting the fear against certain people. But for us, in this chapel, in this place, in our education, practice a Christianity that's an instrument of grace, compassion, and kindness. Let us do that with our faculty colleagues and our fellow students and with Dr. Ray and with Reverend Valerie Mayo. Let us live into that beloved community where perfect love casts out fear. I'll end with that beautiful colic with which we began. Which expresses a little bit of the passion of this Saint Augustine. Lord God, the light of minds that know you, the life of the souls that love you, and the strength of the hearts that serve you, Help us, following the example of your servant Augustine of Hippo, so to know you that we may truly love you, and so to love you that we may fully serve you, whose service is perfect freedom. <laughs>